Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're going to be talking about our first memory. And in general, the nature of first memories. Yes. Um, so yeah, we'll, t- we'll take a trip down all the way to the beginning of memory lane, I guess Let me just it. say that you listening and maybe us talking, uh, it isn't unlikely that your first memory didn't even happen. So if you don't <laughs> want to be disappointed, I know I know my first memory happened. There's no doubt. Well, a lot of people think that. It's just because it, it's so real to me. Um, and I've you know I had an interesting conversation w- um, with my kids about this that that led to a a practice a realization oh, a, a, practice. a practice that I think can be applied to any well any parent or mentor or so if you have influence on a, on a, on a certain type of person. Oh, that I sounds, did, I did, I'll just that leave sounds it at sinister. that. sinister. But I, you know, I, we should acknowledge, and I wanna acknowledge the, the last four weeks in uh, our Lost Years series. Now, a full disclosure, we're recording this just a few days before my episode, which is part four, comes out. So. Um, as we're recording this, we don't really have the benefit of experiencing the response to my episode, so I'm still anxiously awaiting Everybody that. Everybody hated it. But I do, <laughs> that's your prediction. <laughs> but I do think that, um, uh, I, but I mean, yours has been out, we've been processing that, we've been talking about it a well, lot. Yeah, and a lot lots of, of people. A lot of you using hashtag your business. I mean, I think that it. we've gotten, uh, I think it's very safe to say that we've gotten more engagement and reaction uh, to this series, that, so so far, even without your episode, your yeah. episode's only gonna help. Uh, just, there's a conversation that's happening, there's lots of questions, thoughts that are being put out there, and we have every intention to continue the conversation. So I think that, you know, us talking about our spiritual background and where we're at now, and we this is now a part of Ear biscuits in general, and so we're going to return to that conversation. So that it's not just this. Hey, we talked about it, and we're never talking about it again. So we're going to we'll use your questions and comments kind of as a springboard to get us back into that conversation. But that won't be the end of it either. And we can't. I don't know exactly when we're going to do that. Uh, it won't it, necessarily be next week, but yeah, I'll say it's it'll be sooner versus later. I did, you know we do want to continue that conversation while so many of you are. We just have to process my episode and then, you know, g- gather up everything that you've you've said using hashtag your biscuits, which we've been doing. So you, there's still time for you to um, submit questions or your responses. And it, it's kind of a new experience to have this level of a conversation going on around the show. I mean, the fact that. I, I think the first reason that we did it is f- was for ourselves and even. Even without my episode not being out yet, I, I can honestly say that it was it crossed a big threshold in me even just recording it. And I know, so it was very meaningful to just for us to put this out there for ourselves and just to know that it that it resonates with with so many people and um, or it conflicts with some people even you know, and it creates that that dialogue. In a conversation, uh, I just think we're honored to have a, a community of listeners that um, are the vast majority is it's it's cordial, it's it's there's a it's loving, it's positive. And I will say, yeah, I, I definitely and I, and I tweeted that out as a result of the, just the initial reaction that I got to my story. Um. The vast majority of people, regardless of where they're at, you know, spiritually, whether that's, you know, more similar to what we used to be or more similar to what we are now, everyone has been, um, mostly everyone has been like really uh, civil, in, civil in the least, and respectful, kind, even kind and kind and understanding, uh, and I think that that is again. We didn't talk about this to create some sort of division. I understand that anytime you talk about religion or politics, you're just stepping right into it, especially just sort of the climate of our country right now. 
you're asking people to fight. And thankfully, that really hasn't happened. It happened a little bit, but we just wanna say that this is not about creating an us versus them, an in-group and an out-group kind of thing. We, we just wanna have a dialogue. We're, just, we're trying to just have an honest dialogue. Um, and, and thank you for being a part of that, but let's just remember, hey, keep it cordial, keep it curious, and- uh, Respectful. Respectful, and we'll keep the conversation going. I also thought it was cool that the number of conversations that we're having with like, our our friends from college, you know, we're we're yeah. now having an ongoing conversation with them about all this because I mean they shared so many of those experiences with us and like if you listen to our conversation about uh, digital relationships or con conducting friendships over text, it, that was instrumental in us reconnecting with those friends and now it it's a really rewarding conversation that we're having with them. O over this topic, and there's people yeah. coming out of the woodwork who we haven't heard from in years, who are saying that they're listening. It and turns out being on the Tonight Show do it doesn't do it. It's just talking about your background. That's what gets all, all the. <laughs> that's where you get all the phone calls and texts. <laughs> and you know what? There's also a number of people who, I think, their introduction to us has been this series. So well, there's people that's just who are, based on simply looking at the numbers. I mean. Yeah, there's people who are listening, I guess, right now, yeah. that weren't listening five episodes ago. So welcome, welcome to Ear Biscuits. <laughs> uh, if if you if the, your first introduction to this podcast or us was the series, we just wanna say welcome. Welcome to the herd of mythical beasts. That's what we call ourselves. Yeah, we invite you to stick around and uh, listen to this podcast every week. Or if you wanna watch it, you can watch it on YouTube the following what is it, Saturday, Sunday? Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll so let's talk a little bit about what the, what the podcast is. I mean, I think it's also just a moment to kind of recognize for all of you who've been listening for a, a long period of time, I think you've seen an evolution in this, in this show from you know talking to, interviewing YouTubers years ago to uh, doing just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff to kind of s settling into this place where it's just two guys who grew up together, who now work together, who are still best friends, just doing life together and processing it and talking about it. Sometimes it's personal and I think that's how we got to telling our stories is that we had told you so many things about our past and our experience and the way that we see things and we had never gotten into that specific sort of giant part of who we were so it just sort of, there was just a lot of critical mass <laughs> building towards this, hey, let's just let you guys in on this part of ourselves. It, but it's really because of the nature of the show, that's what it's become, it's become a very personal sort of processing Yeah, podcast. I mean, it, it, it's a big part of us conducting our friendship, you know, and yeah. also like w just reporting and processing everything that's going on in our lives. So is this podcast just gonna be about our spiritual perspectives moving forward? No, but it is, I think now that we've, you know, we've unearthed it, that it, it it'll much more readily be a part of the conversation on any given week, which I, we were starting to feel that tension that there were certain things that we, we could we could speak about but that we weren't quite there yet. So um, I do think it, the Lost Year series will impacts the, the overall complexion and the, I won't say the tone, but like this, the subject matters of, of what we're gonna talk about. Um, but hey, basically, we're just here to hang out with each other and to hang out with you, so um, keep doing it and uh, keep coming by. We'll, we'll still be here. Sounds like the end of the podcast, is that it? All right, uh, see you next week. No, 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 no. We no. haven't even done anything yet. Uh, and so sometimes we talk about things that are just interesting to us, but we usually try to find a personal connection and uh, that's why we're talking about the nature of your earliest memories. Oh, and we should also say, if you really don't have a point of reference oh, for yeah, us, yeah. Keep, we have keep plugging things. We have please. five videos a week on a show called Good Mythical Morning. Yep, there's and that. every day there's a Good Mythical More episode. You can watch that too. Every Saturday, we do a vlog mm. where it's it's sometimes it's like a video version of Ear Biscuits in terms of 
um, a lot of the stories that we'll tell, I think a lot of those were capturing for for our Saturday release on our Retin Link channel. So check that out if you haven't checked out our vlogs. Uh, YouTube.com slash Rhett and Link. Is that enough of the plugs? Or should we just go full in with like ads? We should just go straight to an ad. You can get. Full plug, full plug right here. Uh, okay. Look at that. Full plug? Plug plug into this t-shirt. Uh, you can get Link's t-shirt, not the jacket, but the t-shirt uh, at mythical.com. And it's not the only thing that can you can get there. There's lots of other things. Other t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, pins, notebooks, beard oil, lip balm, pomade. The list goes on. I mean, it's well, kind of a The mug. list isn't gonna go on, but it could. Go to mythical.com, yeah. rep your boys, bam. Okay, so I, I know we're gonna share like, and we, I mean, we, uh, we have done this at some point. We've I think talked we've about mentioned, everything, but I don't know. We, we probably mentioned what our first memories are, but I don't remember what yours is. I don't remember what yours is. So, so I've already forgotten you your go. first memory, so that'll be fun. To you should rem you should remember your friends' first memories. Um, I think that they they don't mean as much to someone else if they're to remember them as if you as you remembering them yourself. And I don't maybe we'll unpack that there's. When we when we go through the specifics of our memories, that there is more meaning in it than we even realized. And it's funny because the other night I was tucking, I was tucking Lando into bed. He's nine years old, and uh, that's when we get some good quality time. He has this like hammock seat, hammock chair thing hanging beside his bed. Sometimes I'll sit in that and just dangle, and we'll just have a little conversation. That's an odd word to use and it there. And I don't know what prompted this conversation, but I was like, Lando, what's the first thing you remember? I was just curious at his age. And we got into talking about that and la we landed in a place that, where I feel like I got a big idea. You landoed in a place? I landoed on a big idea. So we can get back to what his memory is or whatever, but where do you want to start? Oh, that's well, you've sounded like you were going to tell a story. No, I'm just saying that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this. You're not here. going to disclose his first memory? Okay. I can. Well, he's like I said, he's nine years old, and when we moved to to Los Angeles, he was he was one, you know. So I was like, how long did we stay in that first apartment? We only stayed there six months. There's no way he remembers that. I'm like, and I I was like, Lando, you don't remember living in an apartment in Los Angeles, right? He was like, no. I was like, yeah, you were in a crib. There's no way you could remember that. And like, I was like, and then our, we, we had this house after that where we moved and we stayed there for three years and I started to describe the place. I was like, there was, it, it the driveway was blue. Do you remember that? And he was like, no. I was like, there was a, there was a hammock in the backyard Remember that hammock that we got from like Cthulhu's was a sponsor and it was like this weird like self-supporting hammock. He definitely and remembers green. This, this place. And I was like, do you remember that? And he was like, no. And I like called Lincoln in there like, am I crazy? Do you remember this? I was like, you remember all this. You remember. All this. You mean in Encino? Yeah, in Encino when I lived there. And then I started describing the inside of the house and he was like, hold on, I remember, I remember my bunk bed. Cause I, did we have bunk beds? I was like, yes. And he was like, and I was on the bottom because I remember I would have to uh, reach up and grab and hang stuff from the slats, but I, I had to force my hand in there because Lincoln was laying on the mattress. And I was like, there you go. Do you remember our pur purple couches? He's like, no. That's, yeah, he's not gonna remember that. Not gonna remember that. I was like, and then Lincoln came in there and he was like, do you remember that neighbor who you'd go over to his house and play and he had, the, he had a dog who was deaf? And Lando was like, yeah, I would call him all the time and he would never respond. Cause he I was, was like, deaf. Yeah, he couldn't hear. And it was like, and he had a rabbit. And when they would go out of town, he was like, yeah, we'd go over there and we'd feed the rabbit and they had a trampoline. And that, it, that is what we determined is his first memory. A rabbit on a trampoline? A deaf dog, a rabbit, and a trampoline. Wow. Three totally separate Sounds things. like an adult swim show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you combine those three things, you're in for a, a good time. Uh, well, it's interesting that 
the way that you got him to remember that because that's kind of that's one of the in one of the articles that I read um from psychcentral.com um entitled what's your earliest memory from August 2018 by Janice Wood He's got a Good old great Janice. last name um so there were these guys at Emory University would you like to remember your first memory? Researchers at Emory University. So I'm just gonna quote some of this. Few adults can remember anything that happened to them before the age of three. Now, a new study has documented that it's about age seven when our earliest memories begin to fade, a phenomenon known as childhood amnesia. So you don't, rem no. So everything up until, Everything from four years old to seven years old, you remember, and then after seven, you start to lose stuff. I would say three to okay. seven, because in this other article, and and this is I, this is very pertinent because so many people think that they remember things. Interestingly, my first memory comes from age three. That's early. Uh, which is they say that's about the earliest that you can do it. Let me see what what does it say? Okay. Um, about four out of every 10 people have fabricated their first memory according to researchers. This is another article at BBC, the bbc.com called, uh, Can You Trust Your Earliest Childhood Memories? Um, but basically, okay. Um, they examined the first memories of 6,641 people and the scientists found that 2,487 of the memories shared uh, such as sitting in a prom. I don't know, I'm not familiar with English terms. Sitting in a prom? Yeah, but P-R-A-M. Oh, a pram? A pram. Is it like, like, like some kind of like. I don't know what that. Some vehicle or something? A pram is, I think it's like a large, um, like little carriage to put mm -hmm. a child in. Oh, okay, like oh, a you're carriage. Oh, you talking about a bassinet or like a, 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 yeah. a stroller. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 2,487 memories, uh, which is almost half, were from before the participants had reached the age two, age of two, with 14% of participants claiming to remember an event before their first birthday, and some even before their own birth. Oh gosh. But people, the, f the fact people is. Go, people, people trying to be overachievers. It's like you saying your first memories when you're three because you know that scientifically the earliest you can, so you're trying to achieve. These people don't know the science and they're lying too. It basically just says that your brain is not capable, it doesn't have the structures that it needs to yeah. form the kinds of things that you would carry on. And you may be like, well I was special and I remember being, there are people who think they remember being in their mother's womb or they think they remember their own birth. And then a lot of people think, in fact Freud taught this, that you do have all those old memories but you've suppressed them. For, listen, Freud, he, all he did was grasp at straws and make stuff up, man. Uh, but there's a good. I, by the way, I know nothing about him except uh, I. he makes stuff up. Okay, here you go. So young children tend to forget events more rapidly. Now da, da, da. I will say newborns do have memories of being in the womb. They will respond, um, they will respond to things on the outside based on what they heard on the inside. Like somehow science does say No, no, that. I'm not saying, but but you don't but then have they, the ability to, to re retain, retain those, memories. those memories and bring right. them into adulthood. She says, uh, this, this one researcher says, memories are like orzo, which is a pasta, uh, referring to the rice grain sized pasta, little bits and pieces of neural encoding. Young children's brains are like colanders with large holes trying to retain these little pieces of memory. As the water rushes out, so do many of the grains of orzo. Adults, however, use a fine net instead of a colander for a screen. Uh, then you get to be our age and that net gets a bunch of holes in it. So basically, oh, so but the childhood amnesia thing is this the idea that you've got these memories that you remember from about age three and then once you turn seven on average you begin to lose those memories unless you've got some mechanisms to continue to remember them. Right? Yeah. And a lot of times that can be a picture or a video. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just, they're first, they're remembering something they projected on a picture that they've looked at in a photo album for years afterward. Well, it's, well yeah, because a lot of times you're constructing the and memory. And if you got a photo from inside of a womb, 
I've got you, lots of those. You are a you're I've got freak. a whole folder. You're a freak. It's just called Don't I don't want to know sonograph. what it's called. I don't oh. Right? Is that what it's called? Oh, no. When you get what, 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 no, not that, sonogram. <laughs> what do you get when you go to Sonogram. The, sonogram? Yeah, that's not what I'm I've tried to about. remember all I've tried to I'm forget. Talking about as if a baby took a Polaroid from the inside. That's what they're doing now. Y it's, you pass in a Polaroid? It's not. And then the, the baby yeah. takes a picture? Yeah, exactly. Well that's not what happens. And I don't even know how we got on this. Well, it's not very pertinent ways. because it's. People use, people will see a picture true. from a point in their past and then they will construct a memory around it. That's what happens a lot of times. There's all kinds of ways to implant false memories but and I don't wanna go too much more into it because I wanna talk about what yeah, our memories are. But essentially, if you think you remember something before the age of three, you probably don't. If you if you think you remember it before the age of two, like when you were like one or younger, you definitely don't remember it. And you, you need to come up with a new memory. And you know what? We still accept you. You know what? You don't have to you don't have to remember stuff from way back then for us to love you. I love you. I I, I love you if you don't remember anything. You know? Dang. What's your first memory? I was 3. Um, it was Halloween, um, which means I had just turned three, which is pretty unusual. But you know, I'm one of I'm one of those guys. Maybe you had just turned four. No, because it was in Georgia. Okay, I have to talk to my mom. Maybe I turned, but it was in Georgia, and I think I turned four in in California when we moved to Thousand Oaks. Maybe I just turned four, but I think I just turned three. But this is my earliest memory. Uh, Halloween, I had decided to be Big Bird for reasons that should be obvious. I'm big, I like birds. Do you remember being hypersensitive to being the tallest kid at that age? Of course, that, that might have been your first memory, so. I don't. Like ev in kindergarten. No, I've never, I've never had a sense of being like a real, a real, sense of being that much bigger and taller than people until people keep telling me that I am, right? So I don't think I was very self-conscious about it. Even though you look at the pictures and you're like, how did they, why did they let this eighth grader into this preschool class? You know, is he the, is he a teacher's assistant? Because and he looks a little young for that. I guess choosing Big Bird does reflect like a certain either confidence or at least an ambivalence to to your height, but I mean, Big Bird's tall, so but, if you're but, choosing but Big also, Bird, it's like, I know I'm tall and that's this will work. Well, let, let's be clear here. If I was three years old, I did not select Big Bird. Big Bird was selected for me. Oh, this, which, is, your, which this is, is your parents shaming you. Which this is might, might need to be something that I explore in therapy is that. That's right. My mom most likely, and my dad's not picking out Halloween costumes, I know how he is. <laughs> my mom decided for me that I should be Big Bird. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember being very excited about being Big Bird, so well, maybe I- Is that I'd... your first memory? Being excited? No, I'm gonna tell you the first memory. I'm gonna, the, the, uh, this only, the story only makes sense in light of me actually being excited about being Big Bird. Okay. Because I wanted to go trick-or-treating, I was excited to go trick-or-treating, I was gonna get to go with my brother who was three years older than me. Was he Wiley Coyote? I don't even remember what he was because this isn't his memory, it's mine. You didn't even care, huh? Um, I feel like he might have been a robot, but I honestly don't remember. I was Wiley e. Coyote one year, and I'm not even lying. And it might have been the same time. I'll have to. I know there's a picture of me as Wiley e. Coyote, and I've never realized this until this moment. But Wiley e. Coyote I, is like a Warner Brothers character. Oh shoot! I'm getting Big Bird. You're, are you confusing with, the Sesame Street universe with I'm, the? I'm getting Big Bird Looney confused Tunes? with uh, the Road Runner. <laughs> Hey man, that would have been a good coincidence. Hold on, hold on. you were the Roadrunner. I was Wiley Coyote. Oh, so uh, okay. And, and that, you were if I was big, the Roadrunner, I would have made you yeah, right, yeah, right. But right. I wasn't. I was Big Bird. I screwed it up, man. I thought that would have been serendipity. Back to your story. And uh, of course, this was 1980, probably, which meant that my costume consisted of like of like of some sort of vinyl. You know what I mean? Plastic. It yeah. was very plastic, and if you recall, it's like a plastic tarp with a hole that your head goes through, if, and then a mask. If you recall your memory of Big Bird, you might know remember his legs. You remember the color of his legs? Orange legs with pink rings. 
Yeah, I would just I would have just said it was orange and pink striped legs, like horizontal stripes that go up the leg, pink and orange, yeah. And uh, that's what I remember. I'm not gonna bring up a picture of Big Bird to, because I want this to be a pristine thing in my, in my mind. Okay. And literally the first step out the door, I tripped on something, fell down and fell on my knee and ripped a hole in the vinyl and also kind of skint my knee up. And at uh -huh. that point it was that I'm embarrassed because my whole my costume has a hole in it. Yeah, I think you knew if people looked at your knee, they would know there's a human. They're under like, there. that's not Big Bird. I can see a human knee under there. Yeah. And so the whole plan had just fallen apart, and uh, I just stayed in. What I remember, again, this I don't know what part is constructed and what part actually happened. I remember staying inside, and they had to like bring. I you know like my brother would bring me some of his candy, like I had to use some of his candy because I didn't actually go outside. So you just stayed, you stayed back with your dad probably. Your mom took your brother out. Don't remember those details. I, I, no, I just told I, you everything that I remember. Okay, so that's your first memory. There's a little trauma there. Maybe a lot of trauma. Seems like a lot, of, I, I'd be interested in what your parents say about this. When I, when I was walking across the parking lot this morning, you were sitting in your car on the phone I thought you. I thought I heard the, your mom's voice. You did. I was you were talking to your mom in the car. You should have asked her about this. Uh, I didn't. She's not gonna remember. You talking about something else? What else is there to talk about? My dad called me last night. This is a side note, and I I mailed him. I finally I mailed him Lost Causes of Bleak Creek, finally. And I also gave him one of our records, you know, Mythical Society when we covered Merle. And it, it comes, you know, it comes with that sticker in it that says Mythical Recording. And my right. dad was talking about the record and he said he liked the album cover and all that stuff and how if you turn it over, it's the reverse. And, um, and then he said, and now, you know that little thing that says um, uh, Mythical Recording on it, if, if I were to, if I were to, Peel that off. Would that would I be? Would that s stick on something, or would that mess it up? And I was like, "Yeah, it's fine, Dad. It's it's a sticker. <laughs> it is a sticker. I think that's the word you're looking for." He's like, "Well, I, okay, I knew what a sticker was. I just didn't know if if this was a sticker." <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you had a much more interesting conversation than I did with my mom. We didn't talk about stickers at all. <laughs> well, so do you want to hear my first memory, and then we'll analyze both of them. Okay. Um, my first memory was let's see before I went to preschool so I went to preschool when I was like 6 and then or 5 no I went to kindergarten when I was 6 preschool when I was like 5 so from the age of like 2 to 4 I stayed at Redder's house uh Loretta you met her she's my first babysitter um she only kept me and my first best friend Brad that I talk about in the book of mythicality and so my first memories are are at her house where I would spend the day. Um, I remember one day, we would always stay at her house, we would rarely leave, um, and maybe that's why I remember this because it was very unusual because we did leave, we went to a friend of hers house and it was, it, it was maybe a mile or two away, still away in the country and there was this, she, we, we were playing in the backyard and there were some other kids there I, re I remember being very afraid of other kids, like even in preschool. <laughs> I don't know. I liked the people that I knew, man. And um, but I was. What, what were you afraid of? I don't know. What was going to happen? I don't know. Just the peopleness of them. Hmm. I I, re I don't know. I haven't gotten into that. But I do remember I was in the backyard and I was on this swing set thing, and you know they got like normal swings, but and they're like metal swings, but you've got this certain type of swing that um, it's got two benches that face each other, and then so, and as it swings, it kind of stays parallel. You know what I'm talking about? Like a very old timey type swing, but it's two people facing each other on this thing. You never been on one of those? Uh, I mean, and you we stay- were probably too tall. You stay in the same the same height? You stay um, parallel to the ground, but you move up and down because it, it's kind of like um, 
a rowboat kind of vibe. I don't know. It's kind of there. There's two. I think you're making this up. There's I think two, even the swing is two a bars. There's two bars that come down. One in front of one person and one in front of the, one beside the other person. Oh, it's not on a chain. Yeah, no, it's on bars and it, it's they're fixed and you're facing the other person. Okay. I, I was on it by myself and I was holding on to the bars and I remember. Facing no one. It like, I'm pretty sure it pinched or the way I would have said it at the time was, it pinched me. It pinched my hand and cut it and there was blood. And my recollection is that there was a lot of blood. And I remember running into this, this stranger's house and trying to find Redder and. Um, well, first of all, before you continue, I will say that they don't make Jungle gym equipment like they used to. Oh no! I I actually believe everything is so safe now. I think that there should be a like a way that a kid could come away from a piece of equipment bleeding just as a life lesson. Maybe one one less ear. Yeah, I mean, I think that every piece of playground equipment that is manufactured now should have like one really unnecessarily sharp point. Yeah, like a jagged edge. So that at least once a year, one kid really gets snagged on that thing. And then the custodian should come out with a paintbrush of tetanus and just kinda like brush it well, on. Well, tetanus is probably overkill, but I think you gotta have some blood and some scars. What else are you gonna remember as we're demonstrating here? So I run into Redder and I, I, love, I love this woman. Um, She's she's very short. I I think I'm I, I I bond with people who are of extreme heights. My wife's pretty tall for her height, for her height, <laughs> for her age. You're, I don't know what I was gonna say. You're pretty tall for, for your height, baby. For her sex. Okay. <laughs> you could say pretty tall for a woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's woman. Um, that's beside the point. Uh, Loretta is very like short. Funny. Sometimes she's like four. Sometimes the way she's out like four ten is a lot easier than you make it. <laughs> Loretta's like four ten. She was like the most approachable person to a kid, and she made me feel better. That was that's my that's my first you, memory. Did she kiss it? I don't think. Did she kiss your boo boo? She, she, she cleaned it up. She cleaned up the boo boo, and I don't remember Brad being there. But I remember my second memory. And again, it may have come first. I really have no way to know. Was the one I tell in the book of mythicality, and that's I go into the bathroom right after he came out of the bathroom, and he forgot to flush, and there was a turd in there that was bright orange. Yeah. And I will never forget that Cheeto colored turd. Yeah. It shocked me. It, it was. was a, you gotta it, have something sensational. Like an orange turd is definitely was, something that's not gonna leave your brain. It was like a guy directing traffic around a construction site on the street, you know? You, you gotta wear the most, like fluorescent orange vest type situation. What if it, it was like he crapped a construction vest. But what if it wasn't a turd? Have you ever thought about that? It was a turd, man. Are you sure it wasn't just like a giant Cheeto or like a, a like a cheese puff of some kind? You talking about that he like was like, I don't wanna eat this and he threw it in the toilet and it expanded to turd size? You talking about a Cheeto the size of a baby's arm? <laughs> That's how big it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'll never forget it. So one of those two are my first memory and they're equally traumatic. And I think that's the right that that's the that's the common denominator here between our two stories. Right. And I don't have any other memories from Georgia, which is where I spent my first 3 years. It's funny because I would have told you that I remembered when it snowed that winter when I was 3 years old. But I don't actually remember it. I've just seen the pictures because I do. Yeah. I've seen the pictures of my mom. I've, been, I've seen the pictures of me and my brother with plastic bags tied over our feet. Mm -hmm. It's funny, like you know, we, we were in, we were in you're, you're South Georgia. You're very prepared We're in South Georgia and my mom's idea of like keeping us safe in the snow is to put slippery plastic bags around our feet and well, send you, us out into the snow. You don't want your feet to get wet. <laughs> right, you, know? you just wanna fall and break something. I think when you're a parent, especially, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna project this on your mom and assume that she wasn't actually thinking this. But especially back then, you know, you'd put your kids out the front door and you'd say, don't come back for a couple of hours. Matter of fact, there's a couple of times that I've even said that to my kids now. 
I'm like, you know what? I'm fed up with these screens. Go outside and do not come back in for, and I'll say an hour. An but hour's a long time. But like 15 minutes later, they, they ring the doorbell. Well, if you send them out in the snow and you don't put bags over their socks and shoes, then once those socks get wet, yeah, I gotta come inside, mom. It's rat. It's your big bird boy. First of all, I was three. I'm pretty sure she didn't leave me. And it was snowing in Georgia, which was very unusual. And I think that's why I thought that I remembered it, but I think it's just a picture. You think your mom put plastic bags around her own shoes? No. It's like Reeboks that are back. I don't think so. In style now. The things, the additional things that I remember is that there's just sporadic things from my time in Thousand Oaks, California. What's your first memory from there? So this will be your second memory. I honestly cannot put these in chronological order. I don't know. I, I, I Because I remember being taught how to ride a bike and falling mm -hmm. and, and falling a few houses down and then my pants getting caught in the chain and not being able to move and having to yell for my dad to come after me. And that's probably, I probably combined two memories because there was when I was learning to ride my bike and then me riding my bike probably by myself and that happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a giant sunflower. What? Yeah, this is the only good. This is the only good memory that I that I have from back from really early. You know what? If you really look at a giant sunflower from up close, I would argue that it's actually pretty damn scary. They're kind of wicked. Looking. When was the last time you stared down a sunflower? It's like the black part in the center is just is a lot bigger than you feel like it should be, and it looks and the stuff that's coming out of it, the seed stuff. It to me, it's like it's gross looking. But how do you remember it? Well, I think of it differently now that you said that. To me, it's like staring at a beautiful sun that you can't not, that you can look at without looking away. I guarantee it was twice as big as your head if it was a good one. In my recollection, it was eight to nine feet tall. <laughs> right. It was pretty tall for its height. <laughs> but you weren't afraid of it. See, that's the thing for me as a kid. I would have definitely been afraid of that flower. And I also remember the first time I heard the F word. From, oh, really? From Rochelle. Who's Rochelle? Rochelle was the coolest kid in uh, our neighborhood. She was probably like five to six years older than I was. Okay. And I heard her say it, and then I went up and whispered in her ear, <laughs> and I said, I just wanted to make sure I, I got it right now. I was like, is a bad word? <laughs> And she was like, what did you say? And I said. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She said, she started laughing and said, yes, it's a bad word. You can't say that even though I just said, whispered it twice into her ear. So she just said it in conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like 1981. <laughs> and you got this girl just saying the F word in front of four year olds. I don't remember the first time I heard the F word. I remember the f when uh, the Beastie Boys cassette, License to Ill came out with like Fight for Your Right to Party on it. And by this point, my babysitter's name Why was- Why do you only remember, remember things in the context of being babysat? Because uh, I was babysat a lot. I mean, my mom <laughs> was working. My mom was working, man. I know that, but like you also, you did have a home and a mom. And I think, like, yeah, and we do, I, I have memories. I'm saying, but my mom didn't use the F word, homie. You would have remembered it if she My had. mom didn't say, hey, let me open up the liner notes of this Beastie Boys album and let's, I'm gonna highlight every single naughty word so you can learn it. That's what Joe, the older boy, did. Hmm. We would, he, would, he would literally point to every single nasty word. And he would also tell me about the female anatomy. Well, you need to know about that. Like in detail. You know, there's like, there's like certain things you can say in general about down there, uh -huh. and then you can also go like really, really anatomical. Right. Like imagine the most anatomical conversation, and I guess I was, I don't know, you know, I might have been 10. Oh, so you fast, hold on, so. But I mean. You fast forwarded yeah. all the way to 10. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're talking about this like. This is pretty sporadic. Not, what's my first memory of being 
caught something illicit is now what we're talking oh, about. okay. My first illicit memory is then. And you know what? A few days later, Joe's younger brother got sick and he was laying on the floor, the same floor that we laid on when we were like trying to hide the Beastie Boys liner notes and he started to vomit. And the kid, <laughs> the kid started to vomit and instead of rolling over on his side or standing up or running to the bathroom, he rolled over on his back and he was projectile vomiting straight up in the air and you can die from that. You can easily choke. Yeah, like a fountain, like a vomit fountain. Yeah, and it's, so I think somebody came and pushed him over. It's like did a log roll. It's like you just can't. Yeah, you just can't let a kid do that sideways, man. If we're talking, about, I told you the story about my babysitter trying to dare me to pull the wart off her finger. Oh gosh, you have so many. Uh, you're, you, you, like you're she was, she. I mean, screwed up, man. God rest her dead soul. <laughs> but we would sit in the swing and wait for my mom to come to show up. And I would always be the last one to get picked up because my mom worked late. She was a hard working woman. And I was so anxious. I had this separation anxiety. And so I was afraid that my mom wasn't gonna pick me up. And So we, while you're waiting, you can try to get a wart off we an would, old woman's We hand? would sit in the swing and she would, she'd look up and she'd say, we'd look, she'd look down the street, it was a long, long driveway. She'd look down the driveway and she'd say, oh, there she don't come. That was her joke, there she don't come. And it was like, I could tell by the look on her face, it was like, oh, she, my mom's coming. And then, then after, oh, let, after, let, 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 after screwing okay, with hold me. Hold on, just stop for a second. Well, I'm just gonna pile it all on and then you can unpile it. So then in that same scene, she would say, in order to occupy my time while I was waiting for my mom and she was taunting me, she would say, see if you can pull off this wart from <laughs> my finger. And I, it was a big wart. It was like this woman was like it a was witch. the size of an infant's pinky. She was a and witch, and it was man. on the side of her index finger, like between the second and final knuckle. There was a wart on the side, and I would grab this wart and pull. And I actually, I would sometimes I would dig my fingernails underneath it, and I and that would make me happy because I knew that I was hurting her a little bit. But she would just gr she would just grit her teeth, and she would not. <laughs> she wouldn't. She it was like she, it was like a game of mercy. I think she, she would thought not, you might actually pull it off. She, one day. <laughs> she either wanted She's that like, thing off, gonna get this or she off. didn't want to admit that I was yanking her hard on that wart. Okay, let's 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 let's. Talk I about remember this a all bit. that, y'all. These are my memories. Link anatomically detailed. This woman was a witch. Do you Me remember what she looked like? No. She picked me up one day, she had this, why are we talking about this woman? She had a long Cadillac, but it was two doors, but the doors were as long as what would normally cross like a stretch limo's worth of three doors. It was the longest door. A kid couldn't open the door. A, a teacher had to come when she pulled up, open the door for me and let me get in the back seat. And then she had the window rolled down. I remember I put my hand out the window one day and I was sitting behind her as she was driving. And she's leaving Bowie's Creek Elementary School and she starts rolling up the window. And I tried to take my hand out but the window rolled up so quickly that my hand got stuck. And I was like, oh my, my hand's in the window, my hand's stuck. <laughs> And she rolled it down a little bit and as I was about to pull it out, she rolled it up again. <laughs> she, she, she kept my hand in the window, dude, as, just, to, just to screw with me. She was demented. Hold on, but why, do, but why do you have, you don't have fond memories of her. You have, you have horrific memories of her. I don't understand now why that not, hasn't registered. This is not Redder. I loved Redder, I still love Redder. She's still alive and she's a beautiful four foot 10 inch woman. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, with that's no, how tall she is. With no warts on her hand. No warts, beautiful small hands. Big because, hair though. Because when I think. She had the hair of a giant. When I think about those days, again, my first memory was traumatic, but like when I think about. I bottled all that shit up too, man. I never once told my mom about any of that. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Like four, five, six, I remember there was a guy in our neighborhood who had a pit bull who would pull him at very high speeds while he was on a skateboard barefooted. What? That's Cali. That's Cali yeah, for you. Yeah, but that's the kind of, th I mean, I've got good memories. Did he memories. have a wart? You I got good remember memories? 
when the Santa Ana winds would come and my brother and I would put on giant jackets and go and hold them open and lean completely into the wind so it would hold us up. Like, I'm not saying I didn't have bad memories, but there were no women with warts that were trying to get me to pull them off and there was no evil woman trying to get my hand stuck in the window or getting my hand stuck in the the uh, the swing. I mean, no, do you remember anything good? No, nobody made me get my hand caught in the swing, okay? Do you have any but good But the memories? other two things that happened were both the same woman. So at least they were the same woman. I mean, if those are two different women, that would suck. I did have another babysitter who would say, go outside. She'd make me go outside for the hour that she was watching The Bold and the Beautiful or whatever soap opera she was into. And I hated it because it was just like, I would sit on the steps waiting for her show to be over so I could go back inside. That's not babysitting. Yeah, it's horrible. And you didn't think, I, I think I need to tell my mom. I don't, I, I think I did complain about that woman and then I st we stopped, I stopped going no, there. good for you. Stop going there. How do we get on this? So, um, yeah, I mean, clearly the, I, I have good memories too. I have good memories <laughs> from my childhood. Name one. I remember the wart didn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I did, I could probably come up with some good memories, but what's the fun in that? Well, okay, kind of getting back to what you talked about with uh, Lando. Yes. Uh, in this same article from Psych Central, this is pretty interesting. So, uh, okay, research is showing that infants do not have the sophisticated neural architecture needed to form and hold on to more complex forms of memory. Uh, okay, for their experiment, the researchers recorded 83 children at the age of three while their mothers or fathers asked them about events that they had experienced in recent months, okay. such as a trip to the zoo or a birthday party. Bauer explained that parents were asked to speak as they normally would to their children, prompting them with questions such as, remember when we went to Chuck E. Cheese's for your birthday party? You had pizza, didn't you? The child might then recount details of the birthday party or divert the conversation to another event, such as a visit to the zoo. The researchers noted that some mothers might keep asking about pizza, while other mothers would ask about the trip to the zoo. Parents who followed a child's lead in these conversations tended to elicit richer memories from their three-year-olds, according to Bauer. This approach also related to the children having a better memory of the event at a later age. Okay, and then, and. In this study, because I read about this too, years later, they went back and asked them about those same memories to see what was retained and what wasn't. Yeah, because it says, while the children between the ages of five and seven could recall 63 to 72% of the events, the children who were eight and nine years old remembered only about 35% of the events the researchers reported. So if you've got kids Yes, this is what I'm getting at. If no, first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you. There's an opportunity here. The youngest child between the two of us is nine. Right. So you've already missed the window. Well, here's what you I. You should have been doing this at five and seven. And so only if you've got kids who are younger than seven years old, listen up because I think we've, we've got a technique for yeah, you. Yeah, this is exactly what, I, what occurred to me when I just happened to be talking to Lando about this. I was like, dude, and I didn't know about the seven and nine, but I was like, okay, you're nine years old. You're so much closer to all of these memories than I am to my memories, or even the older kids are to theirs. I'm, I can help you remember more details. We can sit here, we can talk about the details of that house in Encino, riding the scooter all the way around it, getting in that hammock. He started to remember stuff about the rabbit and like all the stuff in that kid's house when we we go feed the rabbit. I was like, you know what? Now that's your first memory. It doesn't involve a wart. It doesn't involve bleeding. And this is a gift that parents or mentors or un cool uncles or aunts can give. Short to babysitters. Your, to your short babysitters. You can give to your, your, your progeny here. You can help them, you can establish richer first memories. I mean, it's, you know, there's the gift of like, our parents gave us the gift of all the pictures that we have, you know, those, pla the plastic wrapped around your, your legs your feet, you don't really remember that, but you almost could have. And if if you would have talked about it at age seven and then kept talking about it, you, when, 
we've talked about how well, the act, act of remembering creates the memory again and makes it more memorable. Well, it rewrites it as well. Rewrites yeah. it. So, hey, but, it, but this, the, is, this is another weighty thing that you might interpret as pressure. That's what I would do as a parent to say, well, you can instill but first I think memories the technique, into your kids. I think the technique, um, well, I, I think you're taking it a little too far, but. Uh, this is sensational. I, no, what I'm saying is that you gotta use this technique though. When you, and I think it sounds like you did this, whether it was intentional or not. It was just two years too late. When Lando started talking about his memory, you, when they bring up something like the rabbit, will follow the rabbit, like literally follow the rabbit and ask them questions about the rabbit. That le- like let yeah. them lead it and they'll kind of be, they'll be recalling it and uh, it also solidifies constructing it. a rich memory that then when they're 41 and 42 years old and they're talking about the good old days, they'll have, they'll have less traumatic things to talk about than we had. Well, and, they, and I think the video component is a big one because I don't, mm-hmm. I think that the first video of me that's available is definitely not before middle school. I mean, we didn't, oh, wow. nobody was taking any video of us. My, 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 my parents got a video camera when I was already in high school, so we didn't have a family video camera. Um, uh, yeah, the, and it was just like school projects. The first video footage that I have of me is my aunt T C. Uh, she was she was she was big into these camcorders, and she would always bring that to Christmas. And she would like she'd set up the tripod and she'd have it in the corner of the room, and then she'd come around and film everybody. So every Christmas starting. Like, yeah, when I was in like, you know, w- when you started getting those big shoulder mount cameras, I don't know what year that would be. I would have footage of Christmas at Nana and Papa's house and I would take that camera and not tell her and I would film stuff at Nana and Papa's house. I'd film like little videos and I'd film this um, time travel v- movie that involved flushing the toilet and this filming the, t- it's like zooming in on the water and then like voicing that over as like a time travel portal. And then I think that was pretty much the only scene. I remember that. Okay, do um, you think you can get hold of this footage? Mm, I, bet, I bet she still has all of it, but it's just like all of us opening presents. You mean you mean me and filming a toilet? Well that. I think that was pretty much it. Don't you think that you should like digitize, if she has footage of you as a kid, like I think that you should get that digitized. You should talk to her about this. Yeah. Those VHS tapes are not gonna hold up forever. It's already degraded quite a bit probably. I mean that's I mean it was definitely grade school. It wasn't it wasn't middle school. It might have been. Well, I I, I don't know if I told you this, but sixth grade, maybe? Because you know I got that three sixty degree camera, right? And um so one of the things I started doing on like our vacations is it every city that we went to when we were in Scotland and England, you know, I would take a number of these pictures and I, I, I put them up, I think I talked about it and I posted it. But now I can put on my Oculus and I go to that website while I've got my Oculus on and I can enter into those photos and see, and there's 360 video which with the camera that I got is not very high res but the photos are great. Cause it could be like, oh, I remember when we were on that hike and we stopped and we took that picture and there's Locke, there's Shepard and there's my nephews and nieces. And Because sometime in the future, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be much easier than putting on an Oculus to just explore that photo and well, you'll have some of the early Well, that's ones. exactly what I'm talking about. So, and I still haven't, I, I kind of regret that I haven't done this yet, but uh, the good news is my kids' rooms haven't changed substantially in the past couple of years since we've moved into this house. But you you know, you're like, ah, what was it like in my room as yeah. a kid? So what I'm gonna do is go in there and just like, you know, stand in the middle of the room, hold the thing up and take a 360 photo of, or let them do it so it's not dad holding it. And, let them, and then you've got this photo that forever, like for the rest of their lives, they can be like, what was it like in my room when I was 11 years old? Oh, I can, I can go there right now. You oh, know, and there's the book that I was reading and, Oh yeah, I, I think that there's my Garfield a, phone. It's like that's something that I would love to be able to have. have you know, I w- I would love to be able to do that personally, right? But you know, this is a, like a pretty a side, easy side benefit of this too. You know, 
uh, for insurance purposes. Like if your house burns down, I don't know, I'm a downer today. When your house burns down, you can, if you've uploaded those to the cloud, then you can just send them to the insurance company and say, I want all of this back. Well, that's actually, that was enough, that was actually my first idea when I got this camera. I was like, I need to take pictures of every room in the house so that I can actually show the insurance company in case of a fire. But then I was like, oh, but this also creates like a literal memory palace that my kids can go into. That's right. With, the, with these, uh, with an Oculus. So what are we concluding here? Your first memories, you, you might have made them up. Um, but if you have influence over a seven year old, they're at the perfect age to just, to, to cultivate uh, what Red said, a, a verdant memory garden of first memories. That's the influence you can have over, over the next generation. You can thank us for it. And you know what, when you're talking to that seven year old, say, hey, you know what, you should listen to Ear Biscuits. That's where I learned this from. Uh, you, you might be into it. <laughs> um, this is our target audience, seven year olds. And I, and you know what, I can just, I can make a recommendation here based on uh, the camera that I have. Okay, is this your, is this your official rec in yeah, effect? Yeah, this is my official rec. Okay. It's got, 348 ratings on Amazon, four stars, so I guess, I, I, it's been fine for me, like I said the. It, uh, it looks like a USB drive with a lens on the end of it. This is the. Is it that small? I don't know, if is that Rico? How do you, R-I-C-O-H, Rico. Yeah, Rico. Theta, Rico Theta, SC360 video and still camera. Comes in four colors, I have the white one. Jesse just got this for me at some point. How, how much is it? Uh, it is a, the white one's 180 bucks. Well, what's the cheapest color? The, no, for a 360 camera? Are the you you That's said cheap. the white one? The is rest it? the rest of them are uh, 200. Everything else is 200, but the white one is cheaper. Okay. Because um, it, it shows dirt. And again, like I said, at least the last time that I now that camera that we used on the uh, going back to Bowie's Creek. Go, for the documentary, Jake, do you remember? You remember what kind of camera that was? That 360 camera that we used when we crossed the river? Because that one was much more pricey. That was more of a video camera first. This this feels more like flip phone. Is it 4K though? No, I mean, well, it's. Uh, let's see what it says here. I don't know what the the video resolution is. It's like I said, this is basically for pictures. Like the pictures are adequate to like capture a memory. If you just want to, you don't, and you don't have to have any. You can actually. Then like upload them to a website and go into it and look at them or whatever. But I'm, it was just a GoPro. It was oh, a it was a GoPro. It was the new 360 GoPro, oh. which is, that thing for video cool is for video. awesome. But you don't have to go, because that was more expensive. I'm surprised you can't just like get a phone that has backward and forward facing lenses, just hold that thing up and there's a program where you can just push a button. Well, there probably is. That probably is a thing that exists. Probably not quite as good as this though. Yeah, but this, that, that's this what, one that's is the like pretty seamless. You know what? If you don't want to take Rhett's rec, just wait a little bit and your phone will probably start doing it. Well, I just think in the distant future, everybody is gonna have like some sort of headwear, even if it's in your glasses and it's gonna be like, little antenna goes up and it's now you've got the 360 and you're like, I wanna remember this moment. I wanna remember everything about this. And I wanna be able to enter into the physical space. Sure. I want the sights and the sounds of this situation and you'll just be able to do that. Yeah. We should invent that. In the meantime, you can Let's buy this. Let's call it Google Glasses. All right. We'll partner with Google. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna provide the glasses. Yeah, we're just gonna provide the antenna with a camera on the end of it. But actually, we're not gonna provide that at all. We're gonna provide the idea. You just heard it, Google Glasses. If you like the idea of us having a, uh, a antenna installed on your Google Glasses, yeah, I do like hit it. Hit us up, and we'll tell you all about it. It's an antenna with a camera on it. Or it. If you wanna hit us up in general, hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know, join the conversation. What's your very first memory? I think this is something good, it's a good icebreaker conversation for your family, friends, loved ones, ARCA conversations on a plane, uh, what, what have you. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Like I said, um, we'll still be talking about the lost years in some capacity. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing this episode with a friend who you wanna remember or you want them to remember their first memory. 
Tell them about our show. We are we are in your debt. Don't forget, remember to tell them about our show. We'll speak at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.